welcome to another fantastic edition of The Russell Brown Show. I'm on location here in Death Valley, California at the Charcoal Kilns, as you see behind me. This evening, I'm going to light these with a Westcott ice light. I'm going to use colored gels, textural patterns, combine those all together inside of Photoshop and demonstrate how you can stack these images to create really amazing results. So let's get started with this project. Let's lower the lights. Ooh. Okay, here I am back in the studio with the results of my Westcott light painting experiments. And it turned out really well. I was able to light up the charcoal kilns with this special soft light that highlighted the edges of these kilns. It was like a portable soft box. It was really, really great. Now let's go through a step-by-step -step process of how I created this finished piece. And of course, this project is all about stacking. I wanted to take this in one single shot, but it worked out really well to take this as separate shots and then stack them inside of Photoshop to create this finished result. Let's take a look at some of the experiments I did to achieve this. Let's go right over to this image right here. This is one of the first images I took. I'm standing off camera with the Westcott light and I'm holding it in one position for about 15 seconds. As you can see over here in my metadata that my total exposure time was 35 seconds, but 15 seconds of those I'm holding the light up. Now in the past, when I've done experiments like this with a standard flashlight, I have to move the flashlight around over the surface, in this case of the kiln, and it has an irregular pattern to it. The Westcott light gave me this really nice fall off around the edge of the kiln. Fantastic! Not only did I do this type of experiment, but I also experimented with a pattern over the surface of the Westcott light. If you take a look at this image, for example, it shows this pattern which has been cut out of some paper, then placed over the Westcott ice light. And by doing so, I'm only revealing a small portion of the light. I simply walk through the long exposure, in this case 15 seconds, and I can create this really interesting pattern. Here's another pattern that I created. And then finally, this is the best one over a 15 second time period for this exposure at f22, I can go in and make almost calligraphic-like patterns, here in this case, shot from within inside the charcoal kilns. Now, of course, this demonstration is all about light painting with that soft box technique, as you saw in this first image. So let's go through the process of stacking these to create my finished result. As you can see, this was my first shot. Let's go ahead and add the second shot in this case, which lit up the second kiln. And then finally, this third shot, which then combines all three kilns together. Let's go ahead and look at the way in which I stack my images. I'm going to go ahead and open up this image right here. So here we are in Photoshop with my three layers that I'm combining together, as you can see here to the right. Now notice that each one of these is a smart object. In fact, if I double click on any one of these images, it will open this image back up into Adobe Camera Raw, as you see here. I've stacked them here inside of Photoshop as separate layers. Of course, to bring a smart object in to a document like this, you can go to the File menu and down to Place, and you can place a Camera Raw image right into this project and then add it to the others that are here. Check this out. My base layer does not have any blend mode to it, but if I click on the next layer above, notice it says Lighten. So if this was set to normal, we would see it like this, but as Lighten, it then adds its lightness to the other three images. So this is the basics of stacking and setting a blend mode so that each of the images adds to the next. And in this process, I would have loved to have shot this with a single exposure, but I found that I got more control by lighting each of these individual kilns with the Westcott light, 
so I could get just the lighting I was looking for. Of course, my camera is on a fixed, solid tripod, so each photograph I take is pin registered to the next. Let's go ahead and go back over to Adobe Bridge, as you see right here. Because in this next step, I want to add a little bit of blue, cool toning to these kilns. So here's before and then after. Now, as I said earlier, because these are camera raw images, I can control things like this very easily. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open up this image here into Adobe Photoshop. And you can see if I double click on one of these smart objects, I can open this up and in this case, go in and tone this. I've gone up here to my menu bar here at the top and I've selected adjustment brush right here. Notice with my adjustment brush, I've gone in and targeted this particular area right over here. And I've gone in and colorized this. As I scroll down here to the right, you can see that I've added a blue tone right here. So I'm painting with this blue tone over my image to cool the light down. Now I could have put a gel over my Westcott ice lights, but this is a really nice way to control this after you've photographed it. Let's cancel from that, and you can see that I've applied that same blue toning to each of the kilns. Okay, let's now go back over to Adobe Bridge again. Let's continue our story. The next thing I wanted to add was a bit of glow coming from the inside of the kiln. So once again, a new exposure, in this case 35 seconds. I'm going inside of the kiln, holding the Westcott light in one solid position because I want to get a really nice refined line, in this case right here, where you can see the shadow casting out in front of the kiln. Once again, I'm staying in this position for about 15 to 20 seconds for this particular exposure and these settings. Then I'm going to continue my stacking process and take this image and stack it with the other images within my set, as you see here. So we're getting really close. Finally, I wanted to add some star trails in the sky. So I turned off all my Westcott lights and I set up my camera and I started to photograph the sky for a long exposure. In this case, it was 20 minutes. So I have a 20 minute exposure of just the sky with the stars moving. Then, finally, I combine that image with all of the other images, and here's my finished result. So it's a combination of several different images combined together that are stacked with a blending mode to create this finished result. And I created these amazing results by using my stacking technique combined with the Westcott ice lights to give this really nice effect here in the middle of the Death Valley Desert. If you want to know more about Westcott lights and the ice lights in particular, check out their website as you see here. There you have it. Give these techniques a try.